It's Calgary's podcast on the Canada's Podcast Network. Hello, this is Bonnie Elgy coming to you today with Calgary's podcast, a member of the Canada's Podcast Network. Today's guest is Shauna McDonald, the principal and founder of Brookline Public Relations, one of Canada's leading boutique PR agencies. Starting her career in Boston and following in her father's entrepreneurial footsteps, Shauna launched Brookline in 2004 after serving as Vice President and Managing Director of Western Canada for an international public relations firm. Now in its 15th year, Brookline delivers creative ideas, solid results, and a fresh approach as a non-billable agency to countless brands across Canada. So, Shauna, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you could be here today. Thanks, Bonnie. This is exciting. Yeah, well, why don't we jump right in and you can tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and about Brookline. Well, as you said, Brookline was started 15 years ago. And yes, I started the agency when I was 15. So you can do the math. I'm just kidding. Um, no, Brookline is one of Canada's leading boutique PR firms. We're really excited to be based in Calgary. We've got 15 staff, offices in Calgary, Edmonton, and Toronto. And um, I think in its 15th year, we're excited to see where the agency goes. And what inspired you 15 years ago to go out on your own and, and start an agency? Well, as you said in my introduction, following in my father's entrepreneurial footsteps, I come from an entrepreneurial family. And I knew at some stage in my life, I wanted to start my own business. So I did that um, 15 years ago, obviously, and have not looked back. Certainly prior to starting Brookline, worked for an international PR firm and learned so much there. And I've said, uh, I've said this many times before, it almost became my MBA. I learned to hire and fire and budget and people manage and build leadership skills. And at some point, I knew this is when I wanted to do it. And I did it 15 years ago. Well, and so 15 years ago, you've obviously then seen the highs and lows of the Calgary economy and maybe had a bit of a bumpy ride at, at times. I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about what are the best things about having your business headquartered out of Calgary. And then on the flip side of that, perhaps what's been the most challenging? The best thing about having Brookline headquartered in in Calgary is whether the city is going through highs or lows, it's a maverick city. It um, has a phenomenal entrepreneurial spirit. When I first started Brookline, many people around me said it's about time. They definitely supported me. They saw it almost before I did. And clients came knocking very quickly and supported me along the way. And what I love about this city is people will support you and encourage you. And they may not have business for you, but they know someone who might. So it comes down to do really good work. Word of mouth is so crucial. And if you do have that professional attitude, great work ethic, business will come. And in terms of... Um, challenges in the market, I would say sometimes being headquartered in Calgary, there is a stigmatism of potentially getting Eastern work. And what I mean by that is Toronto. We bid against uh, firms all the time, but you need to have that central location of Toronto. Even though this world is now so digital, you can do work from anywhere. There is still that stigmatism of not being in that central nucleus or that hub of the city. And so when did you open your office there? I um, co-lease a space in Toronto through a client, and so we have an office there for whatever clients may need space, or sorry, um, support. So we probably did this about five years ago, and it's helped us very well in the market and also showing our clients that we have that national presence. Awesome. And so a lot of our listeners, Shauna, are maybe just considering starting out in a business. Um, If someone was looking at starting their business in Calgary, in today's economy and environment, what advice would you give them? Ooh, that's a good question. I think this environment, you have to definitely ensure that you love what you do and know that you've got a long-term strategy to think through. Um, And also make sure that you've got a very strong business proposition. There's so much clutter and noise out there that you're going to have to stand out above the rest. And so making sure that you've got that commitment and that passion, but also a really strong business sense. And not all entrepreneurs have that. I was very lucky going to business school and understanding the essence of what business 
memes and how businesses tick, oftentimes people just have this idea and they think that they can execute. You have to have that business savviness as well. Well, and switching gears a bit here um, and, and thinking about how you rejuvenate or get inspired because you're in a creative business. Yes. Do you have some a favorite spot that you like to go in Calgary that you would share with us? Well, uh, you asked me to talk about myself at the beginning of the podcast, and I jumped right into Brookline, of course. That's what all entrepreneurs do. Um, but I do have two young boys, so rejuvenating and kind of finding my peace or zen is very limited as a working mom. Um, but when we do have time in the city, we have two cute little two-year-old Labradoodles that we love to take on walks and all the amazing paths in Calgary. I grew up around the Fish Creek area, so that's often a place that we haunt and check out with the pups. Um, but with my boys, honestly, any hockey rink, because they're hockey players, is a great time for me to just, you would think it's not unwinding, but it is when you're a working mom, you get to be with your family. Absolutely. No, that's for sure. So what are you most excited about these days? You've just hit this milestone of your 15th yeah. anniversary. Congratulations on that. Thank you. But what's ahead? What are you excited about? So what's exciting for Brookline, recently we just opened up a design studio at Brookline. So we've got two creative uh, graphic designers that are now part of the team. We used to outsource um, the majority of our creative work and we really felt that clients were looking for that expertise along with PR communications. And so we now have a lead graphic designer and a support graphic designer. And I think that has really blown up our business in the sense that people can do all of the PR comms and creative under one house with us. And so we see that being a great um, opportunity for us, but also a great option for our clients moving forward into the next couple of years. And um, what, where do you hope Brookline is in five years? Or what do you hope to be doing five years from now? Oh, gosh, I get this question all the time. For me, I think in five years, we definitely have made a, a strong name for ourselves and have a really good presence in the Calgary market. Um, we do a lot of work in the Edmonton market as well. So that's an area that we want to build and build out more aggressively. And then, of course, Toronto. So I think those two major markets over the next five years will be a priority for us. We've got great clients in both markets. A lot of our Calgary clients need those centers as well for PR and communications and now graphic design and also digital, quite frankly. So I think over the next five years, amplifying our graphic design center and, and section of the, of the agency building up our digital skills as well, but really targeting Toronto and Edmonton. Awesome. Well, this is a personal question. Um, sure. Wondering, what was the best piece of advice you've ever received and who gave it to you? Oh, I don't know if I can pinpoint the best piece of advice, but I did get a piece of advice from um, someone years ago and it didn't really hit me until I had kids and she said to me Shauna you can have it all but not at the same time and I was actually put off guard and I was like what what do you mean I can't have it all this I was a young uh working woman feeling that you know the world was my oyster and I was ready to grab everything and, and anything at, at all times but it really resonated, resonated with me when I had my two boys realizing that you do have to compromise you do have to think about um, priorities and shifting priorities and that only is so true when you become a mom and especially a working mom so having it all but not at all at the same time was a huge piece of advice for me that's great advice yes I can relate to that as well <laughs> yes I'm sure yeah um, and so thinking again ahead but maybe more on the personal side what are some things that you'd like to do that you maybe have on your bucket list so to speak for the next number of years, is there like a great trip that you'd like to go on or maybe an experience that you'd like to have? Well, I have two sons aged uh, 10 and six, and we have said to them that when they turn 10 and 15, they can pick anywhere in the world that they wanna go and we'll make it a family trip in the summer. And so my son just turned 10. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, please pick China, please pick China. Um, of course, he wants to go like fishing in Alaska with his father. So we're all going to jump on a boat this summer and probably do that. 
Um, but for me, it's definitely China. I would love to experience that uh, country wholeheartedly. I have traveled a lot uh, when we didn't have kids and of course when I was single, but want to get back into that. That travel bug is certainly getting uh, back into me, of course. But um, I think for the next couple of years, it's going to be where my kids want to go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what about books? Do you have some favorite books that you would recommend to our listeners in terms of either a great business book or just a read that you're really enjoying right now? You know what, I'm sure many people are going to all say, oh, of course, um, this book is is typical for most business people. But the one that I haven't finished yet, uh, but I'm in the middle of is Brene Brown, Dare to Lead. It was recommended to me um, by someone in the business world and they said, Shawna, you need to read this. So that's one definitely that I'm in right now and probably one that many people have already read before me, but maybe I'm slow to um, getting, getting through it, but it's certainly one that I'm really enjoying. Um, and then obviously podcasts as well, as you know, um, that's something that um, you and I probably are also very keen in listening to because we both do our own podcasts. So, um, from a podcast perspective, again, Brene Brown has such phenomenal um, uh, segments to listen to. And then one that I love from a fun perspective is Dak Shepard's Armchair Expert. I think he just brings light to any topic. And I think people just need to sometimes um, unplug and, and recharge. And those types of podcasts are a lot of fun. Awesome. I'm going to check that one out. <laughs> yes, it's so funny. I love it. Yeah. You can take any serious topic because there's some really serious topics that he does discuss on his podcast. But of course, if you know Dak Shepard in any, any uh, layer of who he is, he just has that levity and funness about him that, that just brings every, anything more light to it. Wonderful. What about, um, do you have a routine that's like a non-negotiable for you, either to start your day or wind down at the end of a crazy day? We often talk to entrepreneurs that have very rigid processes or routines in place that they feel help keep them on track. What about you? Bonnie, do you have kids? I do. <laughs> there's no there's no routine there's no rigidness when you have kids but um if there's anything that i have that i'm quite committed to and quite ruthless about is my mornings with my two boys um as an entrepreneur and we don't talk about this enough i think with women who are entrepreneurs is you don't have mat leaves you don't have the opportunity to take that year off or that six months off you certainly could but i don't think your business would survive so you know, 10 years ago, I had my first son and I panicked. I was like, what am I to do with my business and ensuring that I had the right team in place? And I know we're getting off topic here, but I'll get back to my routine and why it's so important to me. So I only took six weeks off of work and people kind of, their jaws drop and their eyes bug out when I say that, but that's all I knew and that's all I know. And then for my second, I was quite hopeful that I could take six months off and I only took off three months. And um, my, my sons are phenomenal boys and I, and I uh, don't know any different. But because of that, I made a commitment to myself that um, because they, I didn't have that time with them during my a, a typical mat leave, I wanted to make sure that I had mornings with them. So I don't normally come into the office earlier than 9.30 if I can, because I want to do morning uh, routine with them. I want to take them to school. I want to make sure that they are dropped off and they have mom time. And then that is something that I'm quite rigid and ruthless about. Sometimes I have to give and take based on meetings, but normally the morning with my boys is mine. Mm, that's great. If that makes any sense. Yes. Yeah, no, it totally does. And um, I think one of the things I'm enjoying about chatting with you is, is that you are just providing great advice, especially for women entrepreneurs, because they do have different challenges often, often that they're facing when they're juggling the responsibilities of keeping things running at home as well as building a business. Yes, of course. Yeah, you have to be ruthless with your time. I guess the other point I would say is I'm very um transparent with clients too they know that i have a family 
And I have a rule that I typically don't travel more than two nights at a time. And they, and often people will say, you actually say that to your clients? And I'll say yes. And at the end of the day, they respect you so much more. They see you as a family person. They see you as commitments outside of work. And quite frankly, um, two nights, I think, is enough to be away from your family and get the job done. And if you need to go back in a week or so, let's do that. But they know quite early on that those are the types of, um, I guess you would say, non non I guess negotiable items that I have on the table. Great. And Shauna, what is one word that you would use to describe yourself? Oh, this wasn't on the list, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> one word to describe myself, I would say is passionate. I'm passionate about anything that I, I, I um, have an interest in, I'm absolutely passionate. And I said, I say this to my team, you know, I will do this until I'm bored. And I love coming to work and I love the industry, whether the market is, is questionable or not, there's always opportunity. You just have to make sure that you're there and you're looking for it. So certainly passion. And how do you look to lead or inspire your team? How do you keep your team motivated and excited about what they're doing and, and excited to come to work in the morning? You know, I'm really proud to say that Brookline has a strong culture and that's certainly not my doing myself. Over the years, um, you know, we're going to be 16 people strong uh, in the next couple of weeks. And I think it's a collaborative approach and making sure that you find people that respect one another and work really well together. And sometimes that's hard to do, but the culture is something that you need to work on and you need to ensure that the team knows that, you know, there's more than just pounding away at a desk, but there's also making sure that you're, you're, you're having that time together. And so I think in terms of how I lead is making sure that they are enjoying their day-to-day -day work here. I see my team more than I see my family. And so you have, you have to make sure that you enjoy the people you work with and you enjoy the work that you're doing together. Right, right. Well, I have one question for you that's a hypothetical question. It's, okay. it's the second last question of our, our chat today. And it's one we ask all of our guests across the country. So I'll ask you to imagine that we are going to drop you off at a small, in a small, beautiful tropical island, really in the middle of nowhere. It is in the ocean, so it's warm. Um, there's only one phone booth and there's no internet. You would have the necessities you need to survive, like food. Am I by myself? And shelter. You are by yourself. I'm by myself. Okay. So the big question is, Shauna, how long do you think you would last before you would want us to come pick you up? And the second part of the question is, what would you do with your time while you're there? Okay. So let me get this straight. And I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember this question from the other podcast. Um, I'm on a deserted island. I've got a phone booth. And nothing no else. Internet. I don't have, so I don't have nothing except. You have the necessities. So you would oh, have, do. you would have food and shelter. You don't have to worry about that. The main thing is there's no connectivity in right. terms of devices and you're there by yourself. So <laughs> we're just curious how long you would last and what you would do. And uh, believe me, we get lots of really great answers on this one. <laughs> Well, I don't know if mine's going to be great. It's probably going to be boring. Um, I don't know if I could last a day without talking to my boys and, and my family. It has nothing to do with work. It's just probably 24 hours max. Even when I'm traveling, I'm always checking in and making sure and saying goodnight. And, um, and that's really important to me. So I think more as a mom, I think I could probably last 24 hours max. Um, from a business perspective, the the team is is phenomenal in there, and I trust them implicitly. Um, but of course, as an entrepreneur, you're always wanting to make sure where are things at, how are things going, what's going on. Um, well, probably 48 hours max on that on that side. And what I would do during my time? Gosh, do I have books? No. Oh, yeah, nothing. <laughs> oh no. I'd probably, you know, I'd, I'd bathe in the sun, I'd relax, I don't know, maybe find, create some tic-tac-toe in the sand. I have no idea. I'd probably go bonkers is what I'd probably do. Yeah. 
yeah well i think too and and actually that's a common theme is when you're so used to being on the go all the time right it's hard to slow down sometimes yes yes absolutely and, it went, and in order to slow down you need you need something to slow you down right so it's a book or it's a device or it's it's someone to have a conversation with on a beach chair next to you. So if you're by yourself, you probably start talking to yourself and go crazy. So yeah, I wouldn't last very long. No. <laughs> well, Shauna, I've loved chatting with you. It's been so much fun. And, and before we go, just wondering, is there anything else at all that you would like to either share with someone who's maybe thinking about starting up a business in, in Calgary or anywhere in Canada for that matter? I think if you have the inkling and you've, and you've been wanting to do it, um, take the leap. Um, you know yourself more than anyone that you have to trust your gut. You know, people will say, well, do the profit and loss statements, do the budgeting and analysis, make sure you've got a hardcore business plan. I never had a business plan. I never wrote anything down. I had this intuition and this gut that wanted me and drove me towards starting a business. So you have to start with your gut and ensure that that's something that you absolutely want to do. Talk to people around you and make sure that you have a support system because that is going to be your bread and butter when you actually take that leap. You need to have that support system. So um, your gut, your support system, and ultimately ensure that you trust in your, your idea and take that leap of faith. Awesome. And finally, how can our listeners get in touch with you if they want to get connected with you online? A few areas. Uh, of course, we've got our own podcast, Beyond PR, on Spotify. We've also got our website, brooklinepr.com. We're on this, all the social channels. Just find Brookline and we'll be there. And um, we'd love to hear from many people. Awesome. Shauna, thank you so much for being a guest today. Really enjoyed having you on the show. And uh, look forward to chatting with you again in the future. Thanks so much, Bonnie. Have a great day. Yeah, you too.